Shalom and welcome everyone. I want to welcome you once again to Checkpoint Training Bites. Checkpoint Training Bites is where we bring you advanced training on Checkpoint products, features, and blades. In this training module, we'll be discussing the firewall and we'll discuss the different evolutions of the firewall and different kinds of firewalls. But before we get started, let's take a few moments to discuss the agenda of this module. First of all, we're going to take a look at the firewall and we're going to discuss the main purposes of the firewall. And then we're going to take a look at the history of the firewall. And here we'll take a moment to take a look at the history of the firewall and how the firewall has evolved along with the internet. And then we're going to take a look at different kinds of firewalls and we're going to discuss the advantages of each of these firewalls and how they address different security concerns. And then finally, we'll look at different generations of firewalls and we'll discuss how firewalls have evolved all the way up to the present day. And so let's get started and let's talk about the main purpose of the firewall. The primary reason of having a firewall is when you connect your PC to the internet, there's going to be a lot of nefarious sources out on the internet like hackers and anonymous users who are trying to gather or steal information from your PC. And so the main purpose of a firewall is to allow only trusted traffic from your PC to the internet and to block any untrusted sources from accessing and compromising your PC. The question often asked is, why is the internet so insecure? Why are protocols and systems so vulnerable to attackers? And so to fully understand why the internet is so insecure, we need to step back here for a minute. Because you cannot talk about the firewall without talking about the internet. And so you can say that the firewall was invented to secure the internet. Because without the internet, there would really be no need for a firewall. And so next I'm going to discuss over 60 years of computer history, and I'm going to compress it down into about five minutes. And so this all started in the 60s, even before the internet was even conceived. There was a pre-internet that was called the ARPNET. And this ARPNET was a project to link and hook up a bunch of mainframe computer systems across different universities. So that universities could share and utilize other universities' computer resources. And so in the 60s, there was really no need for security. Because the systems were used and managed and developed by the same engineering departments. And so there was really no need for a firewall because all the systems actually trusted each other. And now we come into the 70s. And now things changed a little bit, but not very much. And now we have more an individual separated networks, like universities and military complexes, and mostly in North America, but now also starting in Europe, particularly France and England. And still there was pretty much no need for security, because these separated networks are isolated amongst different departments. And so these different departments pretty much trusted each other. And so there was still no real need for security. And now we come into the 80s. And the 80s brought a revolution in networking. First, with the invention of the personal computer. And second, with the development of Ethernet. And so together, they brought the introduction of the LAN, the local area network. And so this was the era of visionary companies that were fighting for and building the future of the internet. Companies like Microsoft, Apple, Intel, Digital, and many others. And so with these inventions, they brought networking from the mainframe institutional world down to the corporate personal computer world. And so with these developments, this totally changed the landscape for corporations and organizations. But since most corporate networks are managed by engineers working for those corporate organizations, security was still a minimal concern. And now we move into the 90s. And this is when the internet really took off. And now multiple networks started to be connected to each other. Universities started to be connected to other universities. Universities to institutions, institutions to corporations, the corporations to individual users. And here, this is where the internet was born but it really only started to take off with the invention of the World Wide Web, which linked multiple web servers to the internet, so that users were able to connect and access information using different protocols, like HTTP and access HTML web servers. And since there was really no security built into the protocols, new protocols needed to be invented. Protocols like SSL, the Secure Socket Layer, which was primarily used to protect HTTP traffic from eavesdroppers. So the concept of the firewall was introduced to protect institutions and corporations from each other. And so in this era, this is when security started to be in demand. And so this is also the era where Checkpoint Software Technologies was born. 
The company was born right into the heart of the beginning phases of the internet. And so that's why for over 20 years, Checkpoint's slogan was, we are Checkpoint and we secure the internet. And so the firewall market was born and started to grow, but still in the 90s, it was still not a big market. The worst things were clear text packets that could be snooped on. And also this is the era where viruses and worms were born and unleashed on the internet. But most of these malware were created by nefarious actors to cause mischief, but mostly for bragging rights. And so the security industry was born to counter these threats with products like the firewall, antivirus solutions, and VPN products. And so now we enter into the 21st century. And this is really where the internet came of age. This is the era of e-commerce, where shopping and banking was now done online. This is the decade that YouTube, Facebook, Amazon, and Google became household names. And this is when security became a major concern. So the firewall is used to protect the financial markets and business organizations from nefarious sources. And this is the era when new threats and attacks were introduced. Threats like DDoS attacks and botnets. And these attacks and threats were unleashed to wreak havoc on the internet. But now most of the attacks were now geared towards financial gain. And so now the security industry released new products to counter these threats. Products like IDS, IPS, and antibot solutions. And now we come into the current era. The second decade of the 21st century. This is the era of Web 2.0, where you can watch movies online, stream live sportscasts in real time. And you can do this not only through your PC and laptop, but also through your smartphones, tablets, and smart TVs. But now most of the attacks are either motivated by financial greed or by corporate espionage, using unknown zero-day vulnerabilities and advanced persistent threats. The security industry again released new products to counter these threats, with products like application control, URL filtering, and threat emulation. And this is also the era of next-generation firewalls that combined all of these products and others into a single platform, using products either on a corporate premises or in the cloud solutions or a combination of both. And now we come to the second decade and beyond. I can't really predict the future, but looking at the present, we can have an idea of what the future might look like. We can definitely say it will be an era of the Internet of Things, driverless cars, and cloud security solutions. We can predict that the security field and the security products will still be in big demand to protect any devices that are connected online and also to protect all the resources that are part of the corporate premise and also those that are hosted in the cloud services. And so that was a brief history of the internet with the primary focus being on a firewall. The firewall has evolved quite a little bit since the beginning of its inception. And so in this training module, I'm going to focus on a firewall and I want to discuss the different evolutions of the firewall so that we can understand how the firewall has evolved to what it is today. There are two primary categories of firewalls, network-based firewalls and host-based firewalls. In network-based firewalls, you usually have a software or hardware-based appliance at the perimeter of your network to protect your internal hosts. In host-based firewalls, you have firewall software running on each individual PC to protect the hosts from being compromised. Most organizations will either use one of these two methods, but combining both the network-based firewalls and the host-based firewalls will give you the best and optimal security on your network. In this video series, I will be focusing on network-based firewalls. And so now let's take a look at a few generations of firewalls that we're going to discuss in this video. And so, as mentioned, there was really no need for security in the 60s and a very rare need of security in the 70s. But only when the 80s came around was there a pressing need for security. And it started off with the packet filtering inspection firewall. Invented in the late 80s, it was a type of firewall that used packet filtering to deny traffic except what is specifically allowed through the rule base. A packet filtering firewall just basically looked at the packet header like the source IP address and the destination IP address, and also took a look at the transfer layer. Specifically, it looked at the service ports to verify if the packet matched the rule base. And so if there was a match in the rule base, it accepted the packet, and then the packet will be processed and forwarded through the firewall. 
If there was no match in rule base, then the firewall dropped the packet. And so packet filtering inspection and firewall were just a basic and rudimentary firewall that looked at the layer 3 packet header information and looked at the layer 4 transport header information, specifically the port numbers, in order to make a firewall processing decision. The second generation of firewall was Stateful Inspection Firewall, which is patented by Checkpoint Software Technologies in 1993. And the Stateful Packet Inspection Firewall has become an industry standard because it took the firewall completely to another level because it not only keeps track of the packet header and port numbers, just like the previous generation of packet filtering firewall, but it goes deeper than that and it keeps track of the state of the connection. And so not only does it process the connections that are properly matched to the rule base, but in addition, it keeps track of the known state of each session and individual connections in a bunch of tables that are stored in a firewall kernel. For example, it keeps track if a packet is a new connection, or if the packet is part of the existing connection, or maybe the packet is part of a deleted connection. And so a stateful inspection firewall has to do basically two things. First, not only does a packet have to match a firewall rule base to be accepted, but in addition, the stateful inspection firewall has to keep track of every accepted connection and know the current state of the connection, what session the connection belongs to, and keep track of every information, like when the connection handshake was established, when the connection teardown was completed, and many other things like the connection expiration and logging. The third generation of firewall, invented in the beginning of the 21st century, has capabilities to do deep packet inspection. And so the application of their firewall can look deep down inside the packet all the way down to the application layer of the packet to make sure that the data conforms to established the known protocol standards. And so it is searching for any known protocol violations that an attacker might use to exploit a possible application or protocol. And so an application layer firewall inspects the protocols all the way from layer 3 to layer 7, making sure that the packet complies with established protocol standards. To look at it another way, you could say the application layer firewall is an integration of traditional stateful firewall technologies with the addition of IDS, IPS, and DLP capabilities. And so application layer firewall that already does deep packet inspection can be easily integrated with IPS antivirus DLP solutions without needing additional hardware. And so that is why a checkpoint firewall can block protocol anomalies without having IPS products enabled because it needs to protect itself from any vulnerabilities that an attacker might try to exploit in order to bring a firewall to its knees. Application awareness is the fourth generation of firewall. And it has the capabilities to identify what kind of application is running on standard ports. And so you can allow a drop connection based on applications being used and not just on ports being accessed. So application awareness firewall is able to identify what application is using which ports and to block any applications that are using non-standard ports or are trying to bypass traditional firewall checks. This is especially useful today when you can do most internet browsing over HTTP protocol. And so a traditional stateful inspection firewall will allow or deny HTTP access to certain domains. But in today's world, not only can you search web pages over HTTP protocol, but now you can even get email over HTTP, stream video over HTTP, chat using HTTP app, or even play games over HTTP protocol. And so an application aware firewall can allow you to go to a certain website to view the web page, but can also block you from playing games or streaming video on the same website. And so that was the general overview of four generation of firewalls. I'm going to go more in depth regarding each generation of firewall later on, but first I want to tell you about a different kind of firewall. This firewall has been in development in parallel to these firewalls, and so it has been in existence for a very long time. It's called a proxy firewall, which basically works at layer 7 to monitor traffic such as HTTP and FTP traffic. A proxy firewall connects to the internet on behalf of internal hosts requesting web pages from servers on behalf of computers behind the proxy firewall. And so it will hide the true IP address of all the hosts connecting through it, and it can also be configured to allow access to certain websites, and can be configured to prevent users from accessing malicious websites. 
And so in summary, in this training module, we had a discussion about the firewall. And we saw that the firewall is an extension, a component to the internet. And then we discussed that the firewall was introduced early in the development of the internet, just before the birth of the World Wide Web. And so it started in the 80s with the packet filtering firewall that just looks at the layer 3 and layer 4 of a packet to see if it matched the rule in the rule base. And if there is a matched, you allow the packet, and if there was no matched, it dropped the packet. And then we talk about the stateful inspection firewall, which is invented in the 90s. And it not only looked at the layer 3 and layer 4 information, but it also keeps track of the state of the connection, and a bunch of state tables stored in the kernels. And it added an entry in the state tables every time a new connection was established and matched by the rule base. And every other subsequent packet has to match either an entry in a kernel table or match the rule base in order for it to be allowed. If there was no match in the kernel tables and no match in the rule base, then the packet is dropped. And then we talked about the application or a firewall, also called application intelligence when you're talking about IPS. An application or a firewall does deep packet inspection and it looks down deep into the packet and it scans through all the layers from layer 3 to layer 7 and looks for any protocol anomalies, protocol violations that can be exploited by any nefarious sources. And then we talked about the application awareness firewall that looks deep down inside the application layer to identify the actual protocol being used and the application being accessed. And it will try to determine what the potential packet is doing and it will only allow only supported applications and block any unsupported applications depending on the company corporate policy. And then we talked about the proxy firewall that has been in existence from the beginning of the century. And it identified what websites and FTP sites were being accessed and only allowed access to business related sites. And it blocks access to any sites that are deemed inappropriate during business hours and blocks access to any sites that are known to contain and host any malware content. And so, I just want to leave you with my final thoughts. A checkpoint firewall can run in any of these modes. A customer can pick whichever of these firewall he wants. He can select to run all four generation firewalls, plus in addition, he can run them in proxy mode. And also, it's important to emphasize that each generation of the firewall is independent, so you can combine all generations together for advanced security, or you can have only one, like for example packet filtering, if you so choose. Or you can run the checkpoint firewall in different combinations, depending on your traffic profile and security needs. I hope you found this video informative. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, shalom and bye for now. Checkpoint. We secure the future.